वेलकम एवरी वन टू दिस गेम विच हैपन इन द सेकेंड राउंड ऑफ द टाटा स्टील मास्टर्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर आई लव इट एंड आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू दिस गेम बिटवीन गुकेश हु इज प्लेइंग विद द ब्लैक पीसेस अगेंस्ट वे ई विथ वाइट वे ई इज टू सेवन फोर जीरो वन ऑफ द बेस्ट प्लेयर्स इन द वर्ल्ड नंबर टू इन चाइना आफ्टर डिंग लेरन द वर्ल्ड चैम्पियन एंड गुकेश ऑफकोर्स वन ऑफ द फाइनेस्ट अपकमिंग यंगस्टर्स इन द वर्ल्ड I really enjoy watching the classical games of Gukesh because it is filled with so much of energy. You will never, I mean, generally, like nine out of ten games of Gukesh will have excitement brewing in it, and this was no different. So let's get cracking. Gukesh, uh, opened here. Uh, where he opened the game with e four, Gukesh played e five, and very importantly, guys, you can actually. check this game on chess ranga uh, where it's the same video but whenever i ask question a board pops up in interactive format so the link is in the description and also in the pinned message so you can use that to see the game you can see the logo is up there chess ranga and every video that has that logo will have the analysis on that platform okay so e4 e5 knight f3 knight c6 bishop c4 the italian Gukesh goes bishop c5, c3, knight comes out, d3, d6. So you will notice how Gukesh does not castle very soon here, and bishop g5 comes. Now, why is bishop g5 early? If it is played in the Italian, it leads to sharp positions. The reason for that is that whenever black plays h6. White cannot just take here, right? Because then black has a very nice position with bishop pair. so white has to go bishop h4 and this already creates dynamics which are very rich in nature because at some point i will go g5 now either you will sack your knight or you will move your bishop back when your bishop goes back to g3 it's a bad piece there but black has overextended weakened his f5 square so this is the reason why bishop g5 lines in the italian lead to very complex and interesting positions A6 played by Gukesh. You will see that he is staying flexible. Knight D2. He drops his bishop back, waiting, and improving his position at the same time. White castles. The moment White castles. In fact, White could have also waited, I guess, in some way. But I don't know what way. I was just wondering if you could make a move like H3. But it feels a little incorrect because after G5, Bishop G3. Uh, this Bishop is a little bit like when I go Knight H5. this h3 move may not be the most useful so uh castles g5 was played now of course sacrificing here makes no sense because you black has not even castled just to create and black is clearly better so bishop goes back and now uh comes this interesting move bishop g4 this has been played before it's not new h3 you keep your bishop black is all also playing risky strategy but he feels that his bishop is good putting pressure over here b4 white starts to expand on the queen side and here the game between pragnananda and vidit at tata steel had continued with rook g8 and it looks very natural right you want to play queen d7 uh this is how it continued i believe prag had beaten vidit in that game essentially what uh, white is hoping for is a successful break in the center because white's king is a bit weak there but but if he manages to sort of safeguard it then black center is a little weak and if this bishop gets active here that's just going to be game over so gukesh goes queen c8 i believe he was still in his preparation and he is angling for g4 takes and take with the queen to attack and we felt that it was time to be more quick here and he plays the move b5 a4 was also possible but then g4 and the game gets very sharp okay b5 gukesh takes bishop takes and i was expecting here the move g4 takes queen takes uh this is a threat careful because this is pinned here so king h1 and 
we reach this interesting position where it's double edged but gukesh here castles and this came as a bit of a surprise to me i was like wow he's just castled it out what is his idea now is he not going to attack turns out that gukesh feels that his king would be much better on h8 than on e8 so he's ready to invest a move in it couple of moves rook e1 played by way this move i think came from the fact that if you go g4 takes queen takes he wants to play his knight back to f1 so rook e1 was just played with that in mind okay bishop g6 played by gukesh and this is a little weird move but the idea is clear he wants to go knight to h5 and now way is next move rook c1 threw me off guard i was like what is happening but it also shows a very deep understanding of this position that way he had let's try to understand this position carefully white's main idea here is to engineer the d4 break okay if he manages to do this successfully then he would be better but right now it's not possible because black is simply winning the pawn but can you see how this d4 break unleashes this bishop and a possible e5 would just make white completely collapse uh, black completely collapse you know if e5 comes in at the right time so keeping all of this in mind rook c1 now starts to make sense because after what happened in the game knight h5 bishop h2 and here gukesh makes this move knight g7 again slightly surprising i was expecting him to put his knight here when after take take it's king h8 rook g8 could happen bishop goes to h5 interesting position but he goes knight g7 and now comes the move d4 and you will appreciate what the rook is doing on c1 because after take take the rook will open up so here's my first question of the game to you what should black play here yes it is a free pawn in the center but actually it leads to a completely winning position for white if you do that after this move bishop d6 very powerful and now you see what the rook is doing on c1 right so you can't take gukesh bolsters the center with f6 and i if you found this move kudos to you because this is a very nice strong move center is now very solid and if you take here very likely that he would take with the f or d both are fine but it keeps all of these pieces blocked way he goes knight f1 okay here gukesh brings his knight back to e7 and i think a good move here for white was bishop d3 just put the bishop here later on you can play knight e3 or knight g3 white should be slightly better here but way he goes knight e3 and he is saying to gukesh that i challenge you to take the pawn on e4 but i think gukesh did not like because after takes there is knight g4 and the rook is attacking the bishop the pawn is attacked so you take the knight now if you take uh, here then after king h7 you are in trouble the knight is hanging so you need to begin with queen takes pawn now both these are hanging black can go f5 but you know in the spirit and the nature of this position knight at 6 doesn't work king at 7 black is doing well but white can sacrifice here and this is what we were talking about if we reach such a position white would have compensation because his pieces are well positioned bishop can drop here the bishop is blocked so all in all this could have been done by gukesh to snatch that pawn but he didn't feel that in the spirit of the position so he played h5 again here if we had gone back bishop d3 he would have been nice uh, position he would have had a nice one but he goes for very very risky strategy he goes c4 now this is like 
going all in. Think about it. What White wants to do is go C5 and just completely shake up this entire structure. If that happens, Black is busted. So in a way, this is a very ambitious move. But it does two things that are problematic. One is that this pawn is now loose. Second is this bishop now is kind of getting trapped in every variation with c6. Because if you go to a4, this bishop moves away and the bishop would hang many times. So Gukesh here played the move e takes d4. One could imagine him playing c6, but I think what way he had prepared is c5. And in this entire position, you will see that often white is ready to give up heavy material just to destabilize the center. Like even here, just giving up this is completely fine because I can take here, then take here, then my bishop gets unleashed and so on. So he played e takes d4. And here knight takes d4 was possible. But I think what he did not like is maybe after c6, the bishop is trapped, right? Because if you go bishop a4, I can take your knight, queen takes, and then the bishop is hanging. So, knight takes d4 is not coming. Knight d5 was played here by Wei. I mean, knight d4 was possible, by the way. Uh, c6, you don't move your bishop back to a4. You take on d6. Uh, I was analyzing queen d7 here. And the position does remain complicated. There are moves like knight f5. Take here. Take on f8. Queen takes queen. Knight takes queen. King f8. It's just a interesting line that could happen bishop four and you know black has compensation here but way his move was not to take on d4 he went knight d5 and of course if you take now here white is more than happy the bishop has opened up the rook has opened up this was his dream scenario so gukesh quietly moves his queen to d8 defending everything and now Wei plays knight takes pawn. I was wondering if Wei actually did not have the time to work it all out because he was understanding what the position requires. But I think he was low on time already. He had some 8-9 minutes left for 18 moves. So if he was alert, he could have taken queen takes and then played c5. You will see this entire strategy of activating that bishop here. I take and here's my next question to you. What is a good move for white here? The classy move here and which just shows the entire position in its full essence is e5. <laughs> it's so such a well protected square. But uh, if you take with the d pawn, then I have knight e5 fe rook e5 and the bishop on c5 is hanging uh, this leads to a complicated game on the other hand if you take with the f pawn then i can already uh, sacrifice my exchange takes rook takes and then g5 is hanging and already uh, black is in trouble here so e5 would have been nice so this entire sequence of 97 and c5 would have been good would have led to complicated position. But way he took on d4. And here Gukesh finds an amazing move. And I would like you to take some time and figure out what would you do here as black. Because it's very important to understand the essence here. What is happening. So if you play the move c6 which is to win a piece. It does not work because I take queen takes. And you will see that this is a weakness here on d6. So I can jump in with my knight, attack your queen. And already it's a tough position. Uh, if you take with anything, e takes and the rook opens up. d6 is weak. You don't want to go there. But 
if everything is revolving around this c5 break and this d6 square is a bit weak then gukesh plays this beautiful move bishop c5 i really loved it it's such a solidifying move way he plays his knight back to b3 asking gukesh what are you going to do here and once again gukesh finds this fantastic move try to pause the video and think what should black do so one idea is to play b6 and solidify here the entire structure but that would mean that c6 is no longer possible and then this bishop is very happy happily placed on b5 the move here is bishop a3 so good now i'm attacking your rook if you save it i think i've reached a situation where i can safely play c6 and win the game because now after take take the bishop defends the d6 square and your bishop is trapped so way he panicked here he was low on time his position is also tough so he took here maybe better was c5 here trying to create some play but after knight takes pawn takes bishop c1 black should be better he took here queen takes now the rook is hanging so count the material black is a piece up rook is hanging he goes c5 black takes a rook so piece and a rook up now he takes on d6 by the way if bishop takes i can just go back with the queen you can you are a rook and a piece down you can win back the piece but you will be a rook down so he took here and now you are another question here what would you play here as black black to play yes the move is queen b6 fantastic move it's the only move in the position because let's imagine if you make a move like queen c3 d takes e7 you already won a pawn um i put my rook here knight c1 and this bishop is no longer hanging so you have to attack that bishop so queen b6 makes a lot of sense take so now your rook down still as white because your rook and piece down you took a piece and now my final question for the day where do you play your rook black to play yes it's a simple move rook f c8 is very good because you stop bishop c4 check also possible was rook f7 for that matter because then what i'm doing is um i'm not giving you the chance to give a check so anyway your bishop is hanging what could be actually explored is if white could have given a check before and then taken here does that help but turns out that after rook f c8 i'm winning this so if you play queen c1 now the material is uh, exchange down only but i go queen b4 and there's no way to save the bishop here on c4 so even if you go knight d2 i can play uh, something like rook takes a2 this is pinned here so it leads to a winning position uh, just notice how this e8 square is very firmly guarded so d takes e7 he plays rook f c8 queen still a rook up yes black is still a rook up takes bishop takes and now uh, gukesh finishes her off in style rook a2 is nice because there's a mate threat here queen d5 check king h8 knight d4 trying to protect against this attacking the rook here also this bishop is hanging he takes bishop e8 and the point is of course if you take here i take here and i am piece up in the position so he goes bishop d6 and gukesh quietly plays queen a5 attacking the rook threatening a trade and way he resigns because materially he is a rook down so i find i found this game to be fascinating very exciting i hope you liked it as well very enjoyable this entire position when we played this move c4 really became sharp 
and the way in which Gukesh found this idea of uh, bishop c5. I really like this move, bishop c5, bishop a3. He understood the essence of the position very deeply. And with this, Gukesh now moves to one and half out of two. He also has now a rating of 2730, which is very cool. Um, and this is these are the standings. We have Jordan uh, on zero, but everyone else has started. Firuja is two out of two. Gukesh, Nepo, Anish is on uh, are on <coughs> one and a half points there. Uh, so this is how things are and also I'll add one more link in the description on Wilder every day we have the photo of the day where you have to give a caption and today this is the photo of the day. So if you want to win special prize then I'll put the link there you can take part in it. Uh, there will be one photo every day. So do check it out. For now this is Sagarsha signing off. Bye bye.